Hello everyone, welcome to the mechanical vibrations tutorial. Today we are going to start a new topic which is the vibration of two degree of freedom systems. So this is a very extended topic. What we are going to do now is we start with introducing this system and some important components such as natural frequencies and mode shapes. Then we continue on different uh, tutorials with more examples and how to find the response and so on so let's begin so as you can see from the title two degree of freedom systems are the systems that require two independent coordinates to describe the motion of the system in fact the coordinates are not linearly dependent or for example if you want to know what linear dependency or you know independency means you need to basically go to your you know linear algebra courses and materials especially for two degree of freedom systems you need to review those topics like uh, uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors so it's very important to basically review your uh, linear algebra uh, you know materials and courses because it's very useful for for this topic right so let's uh, start with drawing a very simple, uh, you know, two degree of freedom system. So we have, for example, one spring and mass. So this is what we had before for one degree of freedom system. So K1 and M1. And for another component, we have another spring K2 and M2. This is one of the most basic representations of a two degree of freedom system so let's forget about the forces and any uh, you know external excitation as you see and also we don't need to include the damping here we just study a very you know basic case so there is one coordinate like x1 representing the motion of m1 and the other one is x2 which belongs to m2 so basically as you can see here we have two independent coordinates so first of all you need to derive the equation of motion and you will see in two degree of freedom systems we have two equations and then we can find other components of the uh, you know the system so if we basically separate you know these two masses and try to consider the forces applied to the system same as the standard method we used in one or single degree of freedom systems to find the you know equation of motion so what we have here so this is m1 so there is one force applied in the opposite direction of motion which is due to the k1 and what is this force it's k1 times the deflection of the spring which is x1 right so imagine this mass M1 moves downward like with the coordinate of x1 so what happens is we have k1 x1 applied to m1 right so let me basically make it easier so I just want to remove this too and then what we have we have m2 so m2 is basically when we move it downward there is a force in the opposite direction and also we have another force applied here these two forces are equal and the value of the force is k2 and deflection in k2 spring which is x2 minus x1 right because the deflection if uh, if m2 comes downward and m1 also moves downward the deflection is x2 minus x1 right and the directions are opposite so this is like what we use in newton's you know procedure to find the equation of motion now we know the you know newton's formula sigma m or sigma f equal to m and uh, you know x double dot so for the first mass we have m1 x double dot one which is the acceleration of m1 is equal to the forces if we take downward for x1 as positive, we have k1 x1 in the opposite direction. So we have minus k1 x1. However, this force from k2 is in the same direction. So we have plus uh, basically k2 x2 minus x1. 
right for the second mass we have m 2 x double dot 2 which is the acceleration and what is the force applied to the system is only from k2 and it is in the opposite direction of x2 so it would be minus k2 x2 minus x1 right so let's uh, reorder these two equations and put everything on the left hand side and simplify and see what we have remember there is no external force in this free vibration case so what we get after we you know reorganize the equations we get m1 x double dot one plus k1 plus k2 x1 minus k2 x2 equal to zero and we have m 2x double dot 2 plus uh, basically uh, we have only k2x2 minus k1x1 equal to 0. So as you see here we have two equations. So these are the equation of motion or the you know the equations of motions. So we have equations of motions. And as you see we have to solve this system to find x1 and x2 and uh, what we get here is uh, for 2d graph rhythm systems you see in the future and what i want to do is more on the example we have we have two natural frequencies frequencies and uh, basically we have so let me this is natural frequencies and we have two mode shapes right and you will see that the system does not, uh, like each mass in the system vibrates with both frequencies, does not necessarily with only one of them. So when we say two natural frequencies, it doesn't mean that the system has, like one mass is one frequency and the other mass has the other frequency. It's actually the combination of two frequencies. I, I do that in the example because I think it's uh, easier to follow the procedure uh, during the example. Uh, like solving and uh, show you how to derive the equation of motion and how to or basically how to find the you know natural frequencies and mode shapes and i also explain what it means basically what free, like mode shape means in such systems okay so let's move forward to the example so this is the example we want to study today we want to find the natural frequencies and mode shapes of the system shown in this figure this is actually the system we just studied and uh, for us it gives us m1 equal to m m2 2m so the mass of the second ma like mass here is twice the first one and also k1 and k2 so we have k1 equal to k and k2 equal to uh, 2k right so or k2 equal to 2k right so this is uh, just straightforward so let's rewrite the equation of motion. So as you see, the system is exactly the same as before. And what we found here is m1, uh, m1 x double dot one plus k1 plus k2 x1 minus uh, k2 x2 equal to zero. And m2 x double dot two minus k1 k2 x1 so i just wrote x1 here and i'll tell you why i did that plus k2 x2 equal to zero so uh don't worry about just we just reorder the equation so this is exactly the same as what we found before so if we look at these two equations we we can represent it as a like a matrix format like in a matrix representation so let's see how we can do that and once again you need to review your linear algebra because you need to know matrices and matrix multiplications. So these are the things that you need to know. So let's look at the, these accelerations. In two cases, we have we can write it in this form. We put it in the matrix. We have a two by two matrix, m one zero zero and m two. And you will see in the future that for even multiple degree of freedom system we can write it in the form of you know matrix representation which is multiplied by so this is a two by two matrix we have x double dot one 
and x double dot two, right? Plus we have a stiffness matrix. So what we have for x one comes here. We have k one plus k two first component. Then we have minus k two. And for x one in the second equation, we have k two or sorry minus k two in here. And we have k2 here, right? So times x1 and x2, and the whole thing is equal to 0, 0, right? So if you are familiar with the matrix multiplication, you can simply expand these, you know, two matrices and uh, find the above equation. So from these two equations, we reach to the matrix representation. We call this as the mass matrix. This is the stiffness matrix. There is no force in the system. That's why we have zeros. In case the like force is applied externally, we may have other components here. This is the topic that we study in the future. So now you found, you learned how to basically find the matrix representation. And basically you need to look into these two equations and get back to the matrix representation. So what we get in, in many, you know, representations, they show it as M uh, times, you know, X vector plus K, the stiffness matrix X equal to basically zero. So this is also one uh, sort of representation, uh, but this type of representation is also used when we have more than two degree of freedom systems in advanced vibration that we're not dealing with that in this course but i just want to tell you that this is also uh, one sort of you know representation uh, in the system okay so just keep that in mind and let's see what we get uh, later so we found the matrix representation and now we want to find the mode shifts or the basically the uh, natural frequencies of the system so how can we deal with such systems? As you know, because the system is, you know, uh, undamped and free, we are looking into, you know, harmonic behavior. So because we are looking for a harmonic behavior in the system, uh, like harmonic, uh, I don't know, uh, response, responses, right? For, 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 this, for the X1 and X2, what we normally consider we can assume that both masses have like a cos or sine function uh, representation and that's why because we expect that under an initial condition which causes a free vibration the system undergoes a harmonic behavior so with this assumption we can suppose that x whether it's uh, like one or two and we can normally write it that xi where i is equal to one or two is equal to x i cos omega t plus phi for now we just keep it in the general format about i mean omega and phi and x i indicates the amplitude of vibration so this is just like what we suppose and what we do now we want to find the first derivative and the second derivative right because we are looking into the acceleration so uh, if we take the second derivative we get x double dot i so it could be one and two is equal to you know minus uh it's pretty easy minus um, omega square x i cos omega t plus phi and why we do this because we want to use that in our matrix representation so what we get in there we have m 1 0 0 m 2 and instead of x double dot 1 and x double dot 2 we can use uh, the expression we found minus omega squared x 1 uh, basically cos omega t plus phi right and this one is minus omega 2 x2 cos omega t plus phi right plus our stiffness k1 plus k2 uh sorry i i shouldn't k1 
close bracket in here so we go back and we have minus k2 minus k2 k2 and instead of x we can use you know x1 cos omega t plus 5 and x2 uh, cos omega t plus 5 right all equal to zeros right so we just plugged in this equation and uh, the other equation for accelerations into our matrix representation and as you see because it's a cos function and the second derivative is similar to uh, you know the original equation we can take out these cos expressions and because it can't be zero and we don't want to make basically set it equal to zero we can further simplify it right so if we do this and we combine uh, like the two matrices we get k1 plus k2 minus m omega square right minus k2 i just put the acceleration components into uh you know our stiffness matrix i mean the mass and you know omega squared into the stiffness because now we have only cos omega t plus phi in all the components right so minus k2 and k2 and this is m1 and this is basically minus m2 omega squared right this is m1 right times now we can write you know x1 cos omega t plus phi x2 cos omega t plus phi but we don't need that right because we already know that cos omega t plus phi is not zero so we have x1 so we just take the amplitude x2 equal to zero because yeah like i said there is a cos uh, something in here cos omega t plus phi here that we basically don't write it again because we know it's not the part that is zero and we're looking for the response and solution so we don't uh, write it again here so now we ended up we basically simplified the you know the matrices and ended up into one algebraic sort of you know representation to find x1 and x2 which are the amplitudes but the thing is now uh the thing is now uh basically we have to find the response of this sort of algebraic equation but to have a non-trivial response you know one response is basically x1 and x2 equal to zero so we have zero times something equal to zero this is a trivial response which means that uh, the, there is no vibration right and again if you want to understand further the trivial and non-trivial responses you need to review the linear algebra uh, you know uh, for matrix equations or for you know algebraic equations but if we want to have just just a quick you know note if we want to have a non-trivial you know solution for this system which means that x1 and x2 are not zero the determinant of this matrix and we can call it i don't know uh, they call it a for example a or something the, the this whole matrix we can call it anything but the determinant must be zero so the condition to have a non-trivial solution for this system which means that the system has a vibration is that the determinant of a equal to zero so just keep it in mind this is the condition that makes x1 and x2 non-zero right so how can we find the determinant it's a two by two matrix it's pretty simple this term times this one and minus this term times the other one it's a two by two you know if you have a b c d the determinant would be you know a d minus c d it's pretty simple right so if we do that we can simply uh, get an equation so what happens it's k1 plus k2 minus you know m1 omega squared times k2 minus m2 omega squared uh, minus k2 squared equal to zero right so this is the determinant we can further expand it uh, like i mean further expand these two components and further simplify and uh, if, if you do this we can even i just don't want to do that like one by one because i don't want to uh, do this simple thing and you can simply do that 
we ended up into this equation omega the power of 4 minus k1 plus k2 divided by m1 plus k2 m2 uh, omega square plus k1 k2 divided by m1 m2 equal to 0 so we reached to a sort of you know uh, polynomial or some sort of equation with respect to omega right so we can solve it and find omega so in fact omega is our natural frequency right so as you see it's uh, an equation with the power of four so how can we deal with that we need to simplify it and make it like a quadratic equation so if we take omega 2 as a variable say u then we find u and so this is omega square right and then after that we can find omega 1 and omega 2 so let's use u here in the future we won't do that because it's straightforward but for now let's do this see set omega squared equal to u and just put it back in the same equation uh, we basically have before so omega to the power of 4 which gives us u squared minus k1 plus k2 divided by m1 uh, plus k2 m2 u plus k1 k2 divided by m1 m2 equal to zero so now we can simply find the roots of this you know quadratic equation we, we already know how to find the roots of a quadratic equation and each root is equal to omega squared like omega 1 squared or omega 2 squared so basically u1 and u2 are the two you know roots of the above quadratic equation which are equivalent or equal or corresponding to omega 1 squared and omega 2 squared now we have the index of 1 and the index of 2 in omega which means we have two you know natural frequencies Okay, I, I mentioned that before that for two degree of freedom systems, we are looking into two natural frequencies and two mode shapes. And as you see here, the roots of above equation gives us the squares of each natural frequency. Uh, that's why we added the index of one and two in here. So anyway, so we can simply find the roots of the above equation because it's a quadratic equation and I'm sure you can simply find that based on the delta rules, right? We had before in our math courses so this is simply equal to k1 plus k2 divided by 2m1 plus k2 2m2 minus plus square root of 1 over 4 uh, k1 plus k2 uh, divided by m1 plus k2 m2 squared minus uh, k1 k2 divided by m1 m2 so the whole thing under bracket right so this is this is actually the like the root of the the roots of the above equation or quadratic equation which gives us the two natural frequencies and so you may ask why we use minus plus here because the smaller root belongs to omega 1 and the larger one which comes with this plus belongs to omega 2 so we order this way like the omega 1 is the smallest natural frequency and omega 2 is the largest right so we we will be able to find the two roots of the quadratic equation which belongs to the you know which actually refers to the a square of the natural frequencies of the system right so let's uh, let's uh, like use this equation and see uh, what we get so what we have so far is omega 1 squared plus omega or not plus basically it's omega 1 and uh, 
So why don't I uh, write them in the same equation? Omega 1 is squared and omega 2 is squared equal to uh, k1 plus k2 divided by 2 and 1 plus k2 2m2 minus plus the square root of 1 over 4 uh, k1 plus k2 uh, m1 plus k2 m2 squared minus k1 k2 divided by m1 m2 now we want to plug in you know the expressions we have for m1 m2 k1 and k2 so we had basically m1 equal to m m2 equal to 2m k1 equal to k and k2 equal to 2k so now we simply plug in these like uh, you know definitions for m1 m2 k1 and k2 in the above equation to find omega 1 and omega 2 so i'm gonna do that and uh, simplify it and i don't want to rewrite it again so we have omega 1 squared equal to 2 minus square root of 3 k m that's it right after i plugged in this uh, you know these expressions here into the above equation and simplify that i got omega 1 squared like this and omega 2 squared equals to 2 plus square root of 3 k m so as you can see uh the like the amount the magnitude of omega 1 is smaller than omega 2 why because we have minus here and like we have this minus here and we have this plus here so as i said it's just a definition we order them in a way that omega 1 is smaller than omega 2 and remember that these are the squares of omegas we have to take the root one more time to find omega 1 and omega 2 and we always take the positive value for omega 1 and omega 2 because natural frequency is a you know it's, it's not negative it's a positive number right so even looking into the dimensions you can see here that the dimensions are correct so let me take the square root so this is just uh, the whole thing is square, like omega 1 is square root of the whole thing so we have 2 minus square root of 3 km squared or to the power of half and only we take the positive one and omega 2 is basically equal to 2 plus square root of 3 km right to the power of uh, half right so as you see the dimension you remember before we had the dimension of uh, omega or basically the formula for omega like or natural frequency was a square root of k over m so same thing here right a square root of k over m with a coefficient a constant and positive number so we basically found the two uh, natural frequencies of the system and uh, like I, i'm gonna quickly go over uh, like the two mode shapes and how we can find them what have or generally what it means but in the future uh, or in the next tutorial we explain more and derive them one by one so so far we basically found the two natural frequencies of the system omega one and omega two and uh, each one like each frequency or each basically index here belongs to one mode shape so there is two mode shape for each system so basically uh if you remember we had the amplitude x1 and x2 in our system we normally use uh, uh like x1 and x2 are like the amplitudes of each mass but you see we we normally represent them like this x11 now the superscripts belong to the mode shape which has uh and also we have or let me write it again we have x1 and we have x2 these are just vectors and referring to the amplitudes of vibration for x1 we have x1 
one one and x two one and then we have x one two and x two two so these are the mode shapes of the system this comes from omega one and this comes from omega two i i'll discuss that in the next tutorial how to find these components but remember for a two degree of freedom we have two mode shapes and the the total response of the system is the summation of the two mode shapes just briefly to explain what it means for example for our system like if you remember the first mode shape is the case that the two masses vibrates together downward and upward i mean the direction of vibrations are in the same no matter what the amplitude is but the directions are the same the other one is the opposite which means that for example if this one goes downward the other one goes upward as they vibrate so this is another mode shape so you can basically imagine that right so that's why we have two mode shapes and each one can be found from uh, each natural frequency so for this example so far we uh, successfully found the two like, or the expression for the natural frequencies omega one and omega two right so if i write them in the x in this form is equal to two minus plus square root of three km so we will stop here and in the next tutorial we continue on the system using this expressions for the natural frequencies to find the mode shapes the amplitude of mode shapes and uh, we'll see if we can use that for the response of the system. Okay, so uh, you need to basically bear with this topic until you fully understand two degree of freedom systems and it's a, it's a lengthy problem, but the procedure is pretty straightforward for pretty much all uh, two degree of freedom systems. Finding the equation of motion, uh, natural frequencies and mode shapes. This is how we repeat and I'm going to give you several examples in the future. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, stay tuned for the future videos. Thank you.